said, I'll tell you, you need to be shine. Just know it's gonna cost you a little bit. For real, it's gonna cost you more than a little bit, it's gonna cost you. Check it out, man. We got a very, very special guest, man. And I just said it before, you know, when we introduce people, man, legendary. We talking about legendary for real, man. We talking about the foundation of Houston hip hop, man. We talking about the leader of the SPC. We talking about K Reno, man. What's man. going down? Man, I'm blessed, man. Just honored to be back in the building with you, bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate my brother Droop over there, man. Always honored to come and be a part of your platform. Man, it's an honor, man. It's an honor. So, so what's new? I know you got the new music, but other than that, we'll get to that. But what else you got going on, man? Man, just just pushing, man. Just grinding, um, trying to keep the Houston scene uh, relevant. To do my part to try to keep it. There's so many great artists that's doing that, but I'm just trying to be one of them and keep pushing this thing forward, man. Is that because I mean you at, at this point now you're in what how many years you're in now you you're somewhere in the thirties thirty what? yeah yeah coming up on forty um, oh, shit. I started rapping in eighty three so been rapping thirty eight years that's how crazy what you say <laughs> yeah but uh, the business side I jumped in in like eighty six so even that's coming up on on forty. You know, so just blessed, man. Been doing it long. That's all I know. Almost 40 years, man. What What is it that keeps you like? Because, I mean, you still rapping at a high level. You know what I mean? Like, it ain't no lazy bars. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's still there, man. What keeps you, like, like yeah. motivated like that? God blessed me, man. He blessed me with a lot of um, uh, motivation, a lot of uh, ideas. And he blessed me with uh, a core audience that that keep me going. They, when, when, I, when I hear them tell me what they like that I did or when I read comments and all that, that just fuels me to want to keep on giving it to them on that level or exceed that level. So I just give, I give credit to the creator and I give credit to my fan base because once they, it's like if you, if you playing ball or something and your people on the sideline cheering and hyping you up, it gives you energy to keep going harder for them. So I can't never, like you say, lazy bars, I can't never do that hmm. because I done set a standard. That's that, We'll talk about that, we talk about the album, but that's the premise of the, the new album. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and even before this, I mean, just six months ago, you dropped the one with Pup. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. a long story shorter. It was yeah. a long, a long, short, a long short Yeah, a long short yeah. way, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like, and, and, and even with that, talk about that, because I mean that was a, that was a collaboration. That was for you to jump out and say, "Man, I'm finna get one of the younger guys out here doing their thing." Well, he came and, and gonna... got me. You know, mm. pup pup is a um, pup is an old soul, man, and, and he's <laughs> a um, he's a boss, man. So he reached out to me and was like, "Man, I want to do a project with you on my label," and I was like, "Let's do it." But um, that's the whole point. He 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 just had the the um, the love for his big brother. To want to do something we put together a real good project yeah and no, i did yeah. like that project and then you come back six months later with a bird a blessing and a bird yeah. you know what i mean i mean that's that's my mo man i really don't i ain't never been that dude that waits three four years before you, i drop something new you know i just that ain't just me that's never been me so i try to make sure that i give you at minimum one per year you know if you got a fan base that love your music, I'm not saying you need to drop something every month, but you leave your people hanging when they don't hear from you in years. It's like, what are you doing? So I try to give you at least one minimum, but that one could easily be two or three within a, a, a 12 month span. Hmm. And then I mean to say a blessing and a burden. I mean I know what that means, but like for you, what does that mean to yeah. you to, to call your album this? Yeah, it, it, it was. It's, it's talking about the gift of music itself. You know, speak for me. Speaking for me, my gift, what I was blessed with, is a blessing, and I'm I'm thankful to God that He blessed me with it. But it's a burden, but not in the typical sense that people would translate that. The burden is 
living up to the standard that you just got through talking about, like no lazy bars, no cheating. So it's like every time I come out, I put the pressure on myself to try to match or exceed whatever I did before that, you know? And I'm not in competition with nobody else. I'm in competition with me. So that's the burden of it. It's, it's nothing negative. It's nothing evil. It's like a good responsibility, man, motivation. Hmm. And then uh, I was listening to it, man, and one that really stood out was that after the fact, man, you were saying something yeah. about how you can – you know, say something in five seconds, you know what I mean? That'll have an a, a, a impact for a lifetime, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, man, you know. I, Which I, everybody, I'm sure, is guilty of that at some point, you know what I mean? If you're not, you're not human. For, for but real. it's I write stuff to try to make us kind of think on that level, you know. I think about something that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said. He said, think five times before you speak. Hmm. And we don't always do that. We don't think one time. But that's what that's how that happens. You could say one thing in anger, you could say one thing in frustration, one thing in hurt, and you dig deep and hurt somebody else, and you can't retract that. It's like, man, you know when you said it, you like, mm. oh man, I, I went too far, you know. So, but it's too late. Too late. Mm. Just that split second of words can cut for a lifetime, man. So we just got to be careful and control our emotions more. Think we got to be more mathematical in our approach with each other to say, I'm going to say what needs to be said, not what my emotions drive me to say, because I'm trying to get back at you or try, I'm trying to so-called win the argument. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is it any, uh, man, what's your favorite record on here? Man, my favorite record on there might be the first track on the uh, upper echelon. Mm. I'm just spitting some some rapid fire <laughs> lyrics on there. You yeah. know, I wanted to start the album out right with that one. You know, just to let guys know, just like you said, look, ain't nothing changed. You know, we we still tan their heads off, and we gonna give it to you right out the gate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you? Uh, who was some of the producers you were working with on here? Man, some of the guys are new. Well, Supreme, you got Supreme. Su trash. Supreme, I've been rocking with Supreme for years. Yeah. Um, but uh, and South Beats, been rocking with him for years. But my homie, um, my homie Martial Arts from Galveston County, um, my homie Dollar Dollar Bill, he dropped some. He dropped about five or six on there, man. Along with some other guys that just reached out to me online. They was like, man. Taking tracks, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm I'm that dude, man. You send me some beat if I like them, you gonna hear your beats on my album. You mm. know what I'm saying? Uh, it ain't no stuff you gotta dig through to get to me. If you jam it, we gonna work. Yeah, being that, cause I mean, you you've been in the game. Shit, we just said almost 40 years. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the world has changed so much. And like we watch like the baby. You know what I'm saying? Who's yeah. who's getting into all the issues that he's right. having right now? You know what I mean? To say some of the stuff he said, like that shit would have been all right, you know, maybe 15, 20 years, yeah. you know, back in the day. Do you now, uh, are you more conscious of like going into your writing process of like, okay, let me say some things different, let me be conscious of this? Or, I mean, yeah, it, I was, I was doing that before the cancel culture even was born, but I was doing it from a standpoint of, of growth and maturity within myself, just coming from people who would meet me and say, man, I listen to your music, but what I like about your music now is I can ride with it while my little children is in the back seat. They can listen to it. So that's what initiated the change for me to say, okay, I want to say this, but nah, because I try now to make my albums as, as profanity free as possible. You know, you're going to still slip one in there here and there, but if you listen to my last 15, 20 albums, the cursing is like super, super low. You know what I'm saying? So as far as um, certain terms and certain derogatory uh, words here and there that have become red flags in, in, in society, I can't say that I'm, I'm, I consciously duck that now because I was already on that path, but I know a lot of people do. But to speak on that situation, to be honest with you, man, I mean, we are in that council culture where we don't even give people 
an opportunity to make a mistake without just decapitating them instantly and being a moral judge like we don't make mistakes like we don't talk crazy and sometimes people say things and get criticized heavily for saying things by people who are out doing things that are worse than what somebody is saying mm. so we just we just love to sit behind a keyboard and and cancel people and, and a lot of times we canceling each other you know um, there are things that, that that other groups of people that can do to us and have done to us for decades and decades man and centuries that we continue to let slide and we give them passes over and over again but when one of our own has a slip of the tongue or if one of our own is not educated you know they haven't been educated or they have not grown and matured to where they fully understand, understand right, not to right, say, right we just that's it for them that's it for them and um these platforms the national platforms that a lot of black people are given we use those platforms to tear other black people down and we got to stop doing that we got to be what they call on code you know it's all right if, if something happens if the baby or whoever else comes out and they say something or they do something that we we might agree is is out of pocket we got to call them in the room you know hey brother hey said this you said that hey, be careful about it. but we're not going to be trying to just cancel each other you know like we just the more judge of, of each other like that yeah 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 it's it's wild man uh you got to be careful with everything you know what i'm saying yeah but that's how they that's how they set it up but see at the root of that and i'm gonna say it i'm i'm going on to say it. at the root of that you have groups of people who set that precedent simply because they have done so much evil throughout they they life throughout their whole existence they've done so much evil so now you got all of these black people coming out that are that are educating other black people on the history of things that were done to us by those groups of people so they created that bubble of hey if you say anything critical about the jewish community you out of there if you say anything critical about the LGBTQ community, you out of that. I didn't say disrespectful. I didn't say uh, making mockery. I didn't say negative or derogatory. I said critical. So even if I say, well, no, nah, I don't agree with your lifestyle, guess what? Oh, you homophobic. Oh, you this, you that, you out of there. Or if I say, well, hold on, wait a minute. The, the members of the Jewish community, they are responsible for uh, uh, the transatlantic slave trade. Uh, they, all the descendants of those who did, we, we can say, uh, what lie did I tell? But you can't say that because they control. So they set that standard and it trickled down to us. Now we round here following suit. Everything is, 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 is not a necessarily a sensitivity issue. It's just a, it's set up to where nothing nobody can can actually have a disagreement with those groups without you know what i'm saying and that's how they like it because it makes a lot of people shut up and hush up simply because they bag is on the line now see it's a song on my new album called i apologize and i ain't gonna give it away i want y'all to go listen to it but that's exactly what i'm talking about because anytime you got a black person that comes out and they make some bold statements even when the statements are true here they come flocking down from the from the mountaintop and telling you what you better not say and hey that was that was disrespectful we were offended by that and what you see now he's standing up there apologizing he's issuing a statement saying that i never meant to hurt anybody hey man look if you speaking the truth speak the truth you know, if you've done your research and you know it's the truth, speak that truth and stand on it. The same way you stood on it when you first said it and you had the confidence to say it, don't let the threat of what they can take from you make you fold up. You know, it's, it's, it's a money thing, man. It's a money thing. Do you think, or what do you think it would take for black people to like balance that out for us on our end? Because it's like, 
I mean, yeah, we out here strong as a people, but in regards to that, you know what I mean? People have, will say the most disrespectful stuff about us with no real uh, repercussion. You know we, I mean? we don't hold other people accountable, see? That's like, you know, Vlad said some stuff about Minister Farrakhan that just flat out lied. Flat out lied, man, and got exposed because the minister got people that's going to ride for him, that's checking, that's watching, like, hold on, hold on, dude. You're not just going to get away with saying anything. So we have to hold him accountable because he didn't come out and apologize like one of us would have, like they make us do. He didn't say a word. He just took it down. He fixed it, took it down, never said, my bad. He didn't even say, my bad, you know. But the problem is he knows that black folks still going to go on that platform. He can call any one of them today. Hey, this is Vlad. I want you to come. Here I come. You know, so that's the problem. If we decide to shut him down, we are the source of your popularity on your platform. You don't, you don't interview nothing but black folks. You know what I'm saying? And all you do is try to get on there and incriminate and, and, and make people tell on themselves and all this different stuff. So if we don't get to the point where we start holding other people accountable as well as ourselves, they're gonna disrespect us as long as we continue to to, to, to not command respect. So that's that's all it is, man. Hmm. That's a good point. Man, talk about uh talk about your decision, because I mean you start to venture off, man, and we're gonna get into some other stuff, but the author, you know what I mean? Two books man, out, you know what I mean? That's that pandemic, man. I mean, I was sitting around and didn't have nothing to do and wrote a whole book. You know, and um, and and for years people were like, man, K, write a book, write a book, and I was like, I don't know what to talk about. So I was like, man, you know what? I'm just gonna talk about my life up until this point. You know, my upbringing, things that people don't know. You know, my family and the stuff like that. So the the first book I wrote was called Life Lessons and Lyrics, and um, uh, then a few months later, I wrote Behind These Bars, and that one was basically talking about the thought process behind some of my lyrics, some of my bars, and like songs I wrote. Why'd you write this song? The breakdown of the lyricism, you know, like people can hear you say something, but that book shows you what I'm saying and it highlights the actual uh, process of putting the song structure together. And when you read it, man, it's like a teaching tool. You know, I, I'm, I'm talking so much trash about that book because I'm like, man, that book should be part of curriculum. I gotta get into somewhere. this one. I read this one, but I gotta get into this one. Yeah, that's the latest one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it's it's breaking down, man. That that should be in, in high schools and colleges, mm -hmm. you know, and not just for rappers, you know, because people say, Well, you're a rapper writing that book. No, this 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 is for anybody who has the um the desire to want to write. You can read that book and it will really, really show you not how to write but it'll give you tips on how to make your writing stronger. In my opinion, that's just how I look at it. Yeah, and you can get these both on Amazon? No, no, well, you can get those both straight from me, from southparkcoalition.net. There it is. Straight from, straight from the straight source, Straight from the man. source. We put it right in the vein. Yeah. That's what it is, man. And then, the other day I'm riding, and I, I hear uh, a, a, a voice, a very familiar voice, you know what I mean? <laughs> I said, man, I had to look. I said, wait, is this K Reno on my radio? Yeah. What's going on, man? Yeah. That was congratulations on that, man. Like I, I real live was like, man, I'm I'm glad to hear K Reno on the radio. Well, you know, I got a buddy of mine, man, and I'm gonna do this moment to plug him, man. He's an attorney. His name is Anthony Mahari. And, you know, we shoot ball together. And he was like, Man, I want you to do a commercial for me. And I was like, Yeah, let's do it, man. So um I put the commercial together for him. And you know he did everything because he put the advertising uh, dollars in place, and because people were laughing like, man, Carino you know, on ninety seven nine, I'm like, it ain't it don't don't celebrate that like they playing none of my music. They'll take anybody's advertising dollars. So yeah, you know, just shout out to my brother Anthony Maharab, man, and um, you know we got we got a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of commercials that we've done, um, some that I've. Uh, Wrapped on, well, the one that I wrapped on, but we've done a lot of collaboration work together. Mm. So that, so that's why y'all hearing me on the radio. Don't give the station no credit. <laughs> you know, shout out to my homie Ant. Yeah. Man, how early does that go back with you though, with the whole radio thing? Like, well, I mean, early on, 
uh, we was good. We, I didn't have no problems with, I, I still don't have no problems with radio. People always say, well, man, you, I know you don't like the radio. I'm like, wait, how can I, I don't have nothing against the radio. I have something against uh, radio personalities who try to make themselves bigger than what they are. You know, again, it's the same scenario like with a guy like Vlad, it's the same thing. You are only relevant because of the, the music that you play. Nobody cares about you. You are a, a, a radio guy, y'all are interchangeable. We've been in Houston all our life. We see those guys come and go. You know, who cares who's playing the music? We just love the music. So when you make yourself out to be bigger than who you are, bigger than the artist, and you try to reach a point where you think that you um, can uh, control the artist, you know, we got to take our power back from whoever it is. You know, we got to take our power back. When, when, these, when these concerts come, the people are, are, are going out buying outfits. The people are uh, taking showers and gassing their cars up and cleaning their car. They're doing that, paying money for tickets and, and parking. They're going to see that artist. They don't care nothing about no dude who's playing the record. You know, so humble yourself. You know, humble yourself and understand your place. And you try to um, put hang a cloud over an artist's head that they better walk a certain line if they want to keep that spot. So Trey always come to my mind. It's like, dude, name a rapper who does more for the community than Trey. You know, I'll wait. So for him to still be suffering from this, this so-called ban that they have, you know, that Radio One has over him behind some BS, man, all these years later, and this dude don't do nothing but good for the community. He's done more individually than uh, uh, 97.9 or uh, Radio One as a, as a company have ever done for the city of Houston. You know, in my in my view. So why are you still holding that? You know, it just we got we got to take our power back, man, straight up. Yeah. Do you? Cause you said I mean I don't know. You said it was like man, we were good. You know what I mean? What was the what was like the turning point or like? Well, because my thing was I think I had a situation where I was lied to. You know, I was see, I'm I'm big on if you say you're gonna do something, do it, you know. So I think with me it goes back to just a situation where I was told something was gonna happen and it didn't happen and I checked the person about it. Like, okay, well, you know, I'm hey, what's up? What what's up with that? So when I ask you about it and then you act like you don't know what I'm talking about, now you fake. That's how I look at it. Now you now you're not an authentic individual in my eyes no more. So that's what did it for me. Uh, but I never was like banned or nothing like that. It wasn't no situation where I was banned. It's just the fact that I will declare war on my own if I feel like you've been fake with me. You know, it's like, okay, you know what? Well, now at this point, you are somebody who's on my list of people who I don't like and I'm gonna go at you now. You know, that's all that was with me. Mm. That's what's up. Well, I ain't gonna say that's what's up, but. It is what's up. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah. There ain't, ain't nothing they can do about it, you know. And, and it, it happened so long ago, you know, that it's not something, like we in these kind of settings, you know, we'll talk about it, but, you know, my, my, my reality is, man, I've been so blessed that, again, I have a core fan base that has supported me, like we just talked about for almost 40 years. I'm free, and I don't have to walk on eggshells around no radio guys, no radio, no, no, no corporations, none of that. You know, so it, it's a good feeling for me to where I can say whatever I want to say about them, you mm -hmm. know, and I don't have to worry about, they ain't gonna play my single no more, you know, because I'm just one of them people that felt like, I, and I say this all the time, I just, I just felt like the rappers in Houston should have got behind Trey when that first happened and they would have nipped it in the bud. If, if everybody would have got together, maybe we could have held a press conference and got together and, and you and you would saw all of the top rappers in this city standing with him like, okay, we're gonna let 97.9 know, we're gonna let Radio One know that we not gonna stand for y'all doing this. And I guarantee you, when the people would have saw the artists, they were like, oh, sh we gonna stand behind them too. They gonna stand behind a radio guy so we just didn't, we didn't unify in my eyes, we didn't unify early 
and and it just went on and on. Yeah, yeah. Do you uh are you into any of the newer newer acts that's coming out around the city now? Man, I be hearing about them, and I wish all of them the best, man. You know, because I've been hearing a lot about some of the um some of the guys, uh, the younger guys like Toby and um, uh, what's the other brother name? Uh, Maxo. Mm, Maxo Cream. Yeah, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I, and and I've heard a little of the music, man, and. and I'd be amazed because it's like, man, these guys coming out of nowhere, seemingly coming out of nowhere. You know, of course, I know they had to, to, to uh, come up the mountaintop in their own way, but I was just happy that it's a new crop of cats coming out, out the city like that. Like, man, this, this is cool, man. And, and they got their own way of doing it. They got their own style, and they've established their fan base, man. So anything that got Houston attached to it, man, I applaud all of them. Hmm. What about uh, before we got out of here? Because I was just telling you at this point now, I've had, I haven't been able to meet and interview the terrorists. Let's yeah. say from SBC, we had uh, Nip on here. We had yeah. Cliche. We had, who else? Point Blank was over there with y'all? Yo, oh, yeah. That's Blank. Point still. Blank, yeah. Uh, yeah, Record Slam, all of them. You know yeah. what I mean? Talk about, uh, are y'all ever going to do something? Because I mean, to celebrate, you know, all together, maybe a big compilation or something, you know. Man, you know, we, 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 because as a crew, y'all, 30 years, you know, 30 plus years, yeah, crew easy, as well, you know, easy. We've touched on that before, man, and, and it might happen. It might happen. I don't, I don't see nothing that could, that would stop it from happening. Yeah, I wanted a few that, for the most part, everybody, for the most part, is still around. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean, and, and reachable, you know what I mean? Yeah, RIP to AC Chill and yeah. 38. But yeah, I mean, it, we just got to do it. You know, it's, it's nothing that's stopping us. You know, it ain't no issues and none of that. It's just something that we just got to sit down and say, we're going to do it. And, of course, brothers or not, we still would have to sit down and figure out the business aspects of it because we all are our own entities like that. But that, to me, that wouldn't be hard to do. Um, it would have, the pressure would have to, the only pressure that I would feel to really do it would have to be put on us by the fans. Hmm. If the fans just keep pushing, like, man, well, y'all need to do this SPC, SPC, then it might make me say, all right, come on, y'all, let's go ahead and do it. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. Yeah. So I already know, I, I can ask, so I know you're working on it, man. When is the next one coming? <laughs> <laughs> now you're a wise man, brother. Um, when I first did Blessing and the Burden, uh, my thought process was to drop two at the same time. But I did a live stream on my YouTube channel, and I asked, I asked my, my people, and I said, man, y'all rather me drop two at the same time or drop one, wait a little while, drop the next. They say drop one and wait a little while. So I got another one I'm working on right now that'll probably be out in, realistically, October. Hmm. Yeah, I'm already putting it down. Yeah. Man, I was just watching one of you, we were talking about YouTube the other day, you were saying, you saying, uh, you had the one up about artists keep your money, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, just stand independent, man. Just yeah. talk about that, cause I yeah. mean, yeah, I mean, because we can't be so desperate to get a a deal, a, a deal in, in quotes, because a lot of us came up out of you know tough situations, no money, and and and, and, the, and they could throw twenty thousand dollars at one of us, and we think that's a lot of money, you know. So we got to be, we got to make sure that you don't just. I understand what's happening that that you in the moment. And if you might not have it, but I'm thinking about 10 years down the line, 15, 20 years down the line, if you make this record, you know, I've done on my show, I've, I've interviewed a lot of local artists who have straight up told me like, man, I regret how I went in and did this particular single because I didn't know it was gonna pop off like it did. I have no publishing, I have, you know, so we gotta not be afraid to talk to these companies from a position of strength. We scared we gonna lose something. You know, no, but you actually are gonna go in there and give something away. You're gonna lose something bigger down the line. So they will tempt you with, hey, you gonna get this deal. We'll give you X amount up front. What they are giving you is not comparing to what you are giving them. It was something I was just watching a clip with T-Pain. He said like last year, I think labels made this was all together labels like 17 billion dollars yeah, said yeah. artists made about 12 percent of that yeah 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 see and, and 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 again just like with the radio cat these are talentless executives who 
have the connections, who have the, the, the structure in place because they've snaked their way up the ladder to get in those positions. Hollywood, record industry, sports, they own and control everything. So we look at them like this is our way. Nah, man, do it yourself. Do it yourself, man. Push yourself. Promote. It's going to be harder, but at the end, at the, end of the day, it's, it's all you. It's all you. How, I would feel more comfortable, man, to have grinded on, came up on the rough side of the mountain and just, just, just broke my back trying to get it done and establish myself even on a small level, but it's sustaining me and I own everything. I would feel way more comfortable than that than, than the pain I would feel from having a big, huge record or big, huge album or albums out and somebody else making the majority of the money off of it and my family is not secure. You know, that, that would kill me, you know. So we got to think about that coming in, man. The, 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 the work you do on the front end, whatever you do on the front end determines what's going to happen to you on the back end. Mm. That's just what it is. Yeah, yeah. Man, well, shoot, you got, uh, we got books, we got radio commercials, we got a new album, we got one <laughs> on the way. Uh, man, what else you got coming up before we get up out of here, man? That's it, man. You know, you said it all, man. Y'all go get the new album. The new album is called A Blessing and a Burden. Um, you can get you can get it from the digital all the digital platforms. You can do that right now, or you can get physical copies for those who still rocking it with the physical copies. Um, SaltParkCoalition.net, and you can get my books from there at the same time. And everything comes straight from your bar, you know. So oh, we got to do this before we get up out of here. Okay, we're gonna do two top fives. Right. Top five H time rappers of all time, and then top five songs Damn. of all time that you would say. Either your favorite or that define the city, whichever. Songs one. from Houston? Yeah. Man. Top five H Town rapper. That should be easy though. Let me see. Face. This mine. Zero. Um, Willie D. Man. That's getting harder. Top five all time. Kiki. That's four, right? It gets stuck on phone. Um, I'm gonna say Gangsta Nip. Hmm. That's five, cause Nip started a genre that didn't even exist. You know what I'm saying? So, so that that'll be five. And they might they could interchange if I think of somebody that I forget. Now song wise, um, it would have to be uh, the first single, the Scarface single. I knew, I, knew you, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, you know, because that's, that's the first song that really Houston got behind, that the hood, the city got behind. That's the first song that we was in a club just chilling on the wall, and it was a local song, and when it came on, everybody went crazy. Up until that point, when you played local stuff, people were kind of just, yeah, you know, or, they wouldn't respond at all. That's that's the first local song that I remember that's like the city really. That ma when I I talked about that in one of our when mm -hmm. I heard that song, I was like, man, we they really will support you if you're jamming. <laughs> so you got that song, you got um the most city done song was by Zero. You got Southside by Kiki. So I'm basically naming songs from the top five of rappers that I just named. Um two more songs, man. Trying to think. Man, it's gonna be a hard one. Two more songs from H Town. Name some more. Throw some names at me. Oh man. Uh what we got? Fat Pat. You got Yeah, you gotta throw Pat um uh tops dropping now. Yeah. See, I'm going by the songs that just changed the game, man. You know I mean you got uh, in yeah. that case you got shit like Wanna Be a Baller, you got you got a want to be a baller, but but I, I guess I gotta say June 27. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I gotta say that too. So that would be that would be the five, man. See songs that was just game changers. Like it's like man, this song, songs that can come, songs that came out 25, 30 years ago that can come on today and get the same response mm -hmm. that it came that it had when it was hot. You know? So yeah, man, just too many to name, but that that would be it. Type five. Oh, mind playing tricks. Hmm. I'm really, I'm gotta throw that in there too because mind playing tricks did it for us on a national scale, 
on the world on the world stage where it's like now all of the East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, they was like gravitating towards this one group that was from our city. You know, so that was a thing, that was a pride thing for us too, you know what I'm saying? Man, it's interesting, and, I, and I'm not surprised, but like anybody watching, they, you know, you always hear Scarface is pretty much gonna be in everybody's top yeah. five. But when you say Willie D, for me, it's like you saw like Willie D become Willie D. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, like man. you ain't see him from Mind Playing Tricks. You saw the battles and all that. Yeah, so. yeah. It's, it's see, see, I always say that he's underrated. He don't get the credit he deserves. I don't know why. It's like this dude rap. He's deep. He hard. He gangster. You know, he real. It's like the stuff that he say in his lyrics, it's like, I'll be like, y'all ain't hear what he's saying. Y'all not getting what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? So he's always been really underrated to me, you know, and as a, as a, as a writer, as a lyricist, as a battle rapper, he's covered all of, he checks all of the boxes in terms of what a rapper is. Hmm. All of them, you know, but... Some people don't know that early history, because I mean, if you ain't old enough, then you you didn't know how you get down. But you know, God check all the boxes, man. You know, you got to do your his, do your research and learn your history, man. Straight up. It's interesting, and it's also interesting. You ain't put yourself in that too. I was like, I wonder if Reno. Oh no, nah, no, nah. you know, you never put yourself <laughs> in a list when you're naming a list of other. You, that's the rule. You, okay. That's the rule. You don't yeah. put yourself in that. You can't do that. You know, it's like because my my thing is to just try to be the best version of me and let everybody else put me wherever they gonna put me. You know, my, my rule is if the top 100 of all time come out and I'm number 99, I'm good. I'm on the list, you know what I'm saying? So, nah, I, I, don't, I don't put myself in, in, in those categories like that. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Well, man it's an honor, man, you know what I'm saying? It's always an honor and a pleasure to speak you, with you bro. how you come through, man, for real. Y'all check out part one, too, because that's what a lot of their history is is in here you know what i mean yeah. this is part two so yeah no yeah. doubt no doubt man i appreciate the love man one love subscribe to your big brother's youtube channel too man the real k reno man and peace hey and the rest of your social media too uh oh man i'm, on, I'm just on twitter and facebook uh the real k reno on everything you don't do the instagram nah i ain't on the ground i got it's a lot of pages of people that you know but i ain't i ain't on instagram at all yeah. you know I'm, I'm i'm still in the stone age on instagram <laughs> That's what's up, man. Well, hey, man, it's Donnie Houston Podcast. K Reno, we out of here. Donnie Houston.